In the book 2 Samuel 7:28, the scripture says, Sovereign Lord, you are God. Your covenant is trustworthy, and you have promised these good things to your servant. God has promised you good things. Those who trust in God will sing and not sink. We will rejoice and not let our circumstances overtake us. Hallelujah. Hello, gifted podcast listener. I greet you with Jesus' joy. May God make the second half of this year a memorable one for you. We are indeed glad to have you on this platform. Our main goal is to make God's word as practical as possible so that you can apply it. God bless you as you prepare to enjoy today's podcast. My name is Kristen, and I invite you to get into God's word today with Pastor Kwame. Praise God. I promise that Kristen will record a new greetings for the month of August. Amen. I thank God for her life and all the announcers. I have uh, Abina. I have um, uh, Stephanie and I have all these amazing people that do the podcast intro greetings, as, which is really amazing. I greet you with Jesus joy. May the peace of God that passes our understanding keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus our Lord I seek your prayers that the Lord will continue to do what he has purpose in his will before time in the life of me and you and all of us that share God's word together on this platform all right so we are still uh, talking about praising God all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long everlasting king supreme being we don't come to do rituals we don't come to do uh, religion we don't come to repeat things that we say that sound cute but as many as who listen today we agree together to say thank you god you are faithful we are not faithful but you are we are not righteous but you are for the rest of our days we worship you help us to grow that we may be like your son, Jesus Christ. In the name above every other name. Somebody say amen. All right, let's get into God's word today. In the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter number 20, division 22, 2 Chronicles 20, 22, the scripture says, at the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon and all the other ones which are abbreviated or which I kind of put the three dots to fight, to start fighting among themselves. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord calls the armies of Amnon. And like I said, so I cut this verse short because there were a list of about five nations to start fighting among themselves let me i'm going to talk to you about lessons from Jehoshaphat. lessons from joseph that's what we're going to talk about right because there isn't one thing that i want to say there's a bunch of not a bunch of things but a couple of things i want to say lessons from joseph now joseph was told at the beginning of this chapter that four or five nations have gathered against him to come and fight him it's like life doesn't come to, with one problem five problems put together against joseph and so the word came to joseph that five nations have gathered together against you some of you are familiar with this and so scripture says that joseph was not only afraid but he was now very, very discouraged. And so immediately he started going to his refuge. And I pray that you will go to your refuge in times when you don't know. And so Bible says that Joseph had declared a prayer and begin to command all his people to fast. And so prayer, write that down in your mind. Prayer was applied fasting was applied and he began to intercede and repent and kind of come before god with that sense of i am helpless without you and the bible says that 
as they began to pray as a nation. The word of the Lord came to one of the prophets and he declared that, that says the Lord, do not be afraid for this battle is the Lord's. He will fight this battle. Do not be discouraged at all. And so there was a sense of relief and encouragement. And so Jehoshaphat said, believe in God and believe also in his prophets. And so scripture says, now God told them to go forward. He will give them the victory. And then so we come to the verse for the day where the Bible says, on the day of the battle, when they lift up, up their voice in singing and in thanksgiving, at that same moment, the Lord moved among these five nations and caused them to kill each other. All right, so that is the back, that is the, the entire story. What we are going to consider, the first thing I want to consider with you is whenever we study scripture like this. We have to allow the scripture to satisfy us in all its angles and all its truth. So the first truth I propose is that would you agree with me on today that we can safely say that prayer is good, fasting is good, prophecy is good, but it kind of sort of feels like until you put praise on it, God is still waiting. Uh, are you hearing me? That's my first submission. Fasting is good. Prayer is good. Prophecy is good. Because they all happen in chapter in 2 Chronicles 20. As soon as they heard the bad news, they fasted, they prayed, and the prophecy came. But scripture says, in terms of God doing what the prophecy said, it feels like God was waiting until praise comes into the meeting before he moves. It feels like that to me because it is not coincident for the Holy Spirit to say, the very moment they lifted up to praise, then God moved. So that's my first submission that it is somewhat safe to say that until you praise, God is waiting on you. Until you praise him, he's waiting on you. Even though he has prophesied, even though you have fasted, even though you have prayed, until you praise, God is still waiting on you. It looks like until praise comes into the equation, your job is not done yet. It's safe to say that because it is not by accident that the a very moment they lifted up praise and thanks was that very moment that the hand of the Lord moved against their enemies. So my first submission is that until you praise, God is still waiting on you. The second submission is that there is still a closer examination of looking at that synchronized experience or that what I call the remote control effect that the praise immediately caused that part of the divine to go to work. We got to explore that a little bit. That as soon as praise was released, divinity expression was also released. As soon as praise was released, the divine was also released. As soon as praise was released, the divine was also released. We got to look at that and go on our second submission to say that 
praise. Not only is it the final thing God waits for. But divinity. Is loosened. Against our enemies. To the gate of praise. So. I almost spoke the Ghana language. It looks like it is just as Jesus was riding on the camel to Jerusalem through praise. It looks like divinity rides on praise when they come in this splendor to perform. Are you hearing me? Praise become the path that causes the chariots of heaven to ride. As it that book I mean, I mean, I'm so sure now or say what I'm for. Once you praise them, it creates a path that he rides on to handle your enemies. Uh, so it therefore presupposes that within your mouth the destruction of your enemies is coded in praise the pathway to victory is in your praise so if you can release after you are prophesied, after you are prayed, after you are fasted, all that, if you can release praise, it will cement the path for God to ride on to destroy your enemies. So there is a direct correlation between lifting up praise and thanking God. And so when you thank God, it creates a way for God to walk in it, to do what he needs to do for you. That's the only thing that explains the fact that the very moment they lifted up praise and thank God, God moved. I want you to understand it, therefore, that anytime you want God to move, you praise. After you have fasted, you've done everything. Anytime you want God to move, you praise. Because after you praise God, oh, I didn't know I was going to teach this deep. After you praise God, you don't have to do anything anymore. You know the mother of praise. Let me talk to you about the mother of praise. Judah is praise. Judah is praise. Jacob had two wives. And two extra wives. The one that Jacob did not love, which was Leah, gave birth easily because God favored her when he saw that Jacob was not loving her right. So she gave birth easily. And within the span of the time the scripture record, she had given birth to about almost three sons. Now, all the sons that she gave birth to, it to her, it looks like each son was a step closer to her heart desire. So give birth and said now my husband will love me give birth again said now my husband will really love me so all along she was using the open womb to bring a deeper satisfaction to her life until she gave birth to judah and when she gave birth to judah then she stopped so when praise comes out your job is done. Are you hearing me? 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 Are you h
when you have praised God with all that is within you and all that is in your mouth, your part is done, then God takes over immediately. So, it is important that we understand that you can praise God and not win your battles. You can praise God and lose your battles. You can thank God and be defeated by your enemies. Because the Lord arises on your praise. Now let's build the last submission because I strongly believe that there's something about praise that is connected to God in a unique way. In the book of, um, in the account where Moses lifted up his hands and Israel gained victory, the lifting of Moses' hand was directly controlling the victory that Joshua was gaining. So it, it therefore tells me that not only does praise create the path, but you, uh, your praise creates the level of strength God will bring to your battle. My God. You know, anybody who knows deliverance knows that if you start praising God, the demons start spinning. So the hotter the praise and the thanksgiving, the hotter the strength of God in the battle. You understand that? That is why I said yesterday that thanksgiving is therefore God's real name. And now he sees his real name. Thanksgiving is a strong side. You know, everybody has many names. For example, if you look at your wife, your son, or whoever, you can call them by their talent. You can call them by the area that they are good at. And that really boosts them up to do what they do. You understand? So God's muscle is called thanksgiving. The muscles of God. Because whenever you thank him, his muscles begin to move. He arises in his power to do. Before this month is over, I prophesy that if you will lift up the longest praise you have ever done, maybe an hour, two hours of praising God alone, I'm telling you, God will do something he has never done before in your life. There is something about praising God that makes God act in a way that he doesn't act in any other way except in the presence of praise. Bible says he, 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 he inhabit the praise of his people. He doesn't inhabit in the complaint of his people. He doesn't even inhabit in the cry of his people. He hears the cry, but God will never sit in the cry. He wipes away tears, but he will never sit in tears. He will always sit in praise. Let's spend one minute to praise God. We praise thy name, O Lord. We praise you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. We praise your name. We thank you for thou art worthy to be praised. You who has ever existed. None is like you. Great and mighty are your works. Wonderful are things that you do. No man can fathom your wisdom. You have formed us like clay. And your breath has given us life. And we come and say, because we have breath, we want to thank you. Because let everything that has breath praise you. We praise you. If you are five feet, we praise you ten. If you are ten feet, we praise you twenty. Infinity into infinity shall we praise you. For thou, O God, have been kind to us. 
you have forgiven our foolishness and has pardoned our our perpetual sins we adore you oh god beautiful savior we thank you we thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you in the good times and bad we thank you we raise our hands into the heavens to say thank you lord for all that you've done amen